Hello and welcome back Squirrel Nation. I hope you're all having an outstanding day. Today I am trying something new, a new format of content. I hope you all enjoy it. If you do, let me know in the comments and I can continue to mix it in. So the idea behind this content is positioning, itemization, and counters in the late game. So I think positioning and counters, they matter throughout the game, but they especially matter at the end of games when you're fighting for that top spot because that's when you can really start to position for your enemies and your enemies can start to position for you and that's when you're getting those tier 2, tier 3 items and just a lot of the decisions you've been making really come down to these final rounds. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the final rounds. So one note is I'm also going to show you all a hunter comp that I think is very... Mm, it, it performs very well in the current meta and... The reason that I say that is you can see in this game is actually the teams remaining are a Glacier Warrior, a Beast Warrior, um, a Six Goblin team, and I forget the other one. But anyways, so those are all heavy armor teams, yet I am a three marksman and I still end up getting first place. And the reason why is one, the counter. So I take a Dark Spirit. So a lot of people ask me like what legendaries counter what? So when you're going against heavy melee teams, uh, or sorry, heavy armor teams, then you want to mix in magic damage, and actually Dark Spirit is the best because Dark Spirit does percent damage to HP. Then another thing we want to discuss is positioning of Dark Spirit and positioning a Siren. And if you notice with the formation that I went with, what I did is I put my Dark Spirit and my Siren in the middle of the board, and I put them at the very front line. So you ask yourself, why did I do that? Okay, well, one, I want my Siren when she ults to hit every single hero on the entire board. If anybody jumps behind me, if anybody jumps forward, whatever, I want everybody to get turned to stone. So that's why I place the Siren in the middle of the board. Then you have to ask yourself, well, is my Siren going to get her ult off before she dies? And that's where itemization comes down. Then you need to have that right amount of defense, that right amount of mana regeneration to ensure that your Siren gets their ult off. Finally, with the Dark Spirit, same exact thing. I put it front line because I want it to take damage so that it ults quicker, and I give it enough defense to stay alive. And you'll actually see that I put my heaviest tanks on the outside, the left corner and the right corner, and then I even have um, other kind of front line tanks right behind them. So the reason I do that is I want those side pieces, the Tusker and the Werewolf, I want them to be able to engage quickly. I don't want them to have to jump multiple times to engage the enemy, but I don't want them to take the initial aggro because I want my Pirate Captain, I want my Lone Druid to ultimate. Final note about this formation is there's no Assassins left in the game. This game started with two Assassin teams. Um, I positioned differently during the Assassin comps because... If I try to position the way that I am with my uh, hunters in the two corners, then the assassins would obviously destroy that. But here's a big thing about late game positioning. You need to be looking at what team comps are being ran against you because you can take advantage of missing team comps. So in this game, there's no assassins, so I can take this formation. And then you ask yourself, well, why do you want this formation? This formation is very spread. So I have my key ultimates in front, like we discussed, Siren, Dark Spirit, and then I have my main damage dealers, my Dwarf Sniper, my 3-star E-Ranger. I have them in opposite corners. Why? Because it's impossible for the enemy team to hit both of them together, right? So if you notice, there's two teams with Devastator in this game, and the worst thing I could do is let both of my key damage dealers get hit with the same Devastator ultimate. So throughout these fights, you are going to notice that the Devastator never gets any good alt off on my Dwarf Sniper, and he's just allowed to sit back and chunk down the enemy. Okay, all of that is like an overview. Now we're going to actually just kind of watch it, and then I will discuss a little bit more and go into the points a little bit deeper. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to watch the final four rounds of this match, and I'm going to point out key decisions um, during each round. So in this first round, what I want you to really pay attention to is the positioning of my Soul Reaper. There is a reason that I put him in the center of my team comp, because watch when he ultimates what happens. He hits, he heals every single member of my team and also hits the majority of the enemy team. Another thing to pay attention to during this fight is 
you'll see that the enemy, the Venomancer, he only hits about maybe four of my heroes with his ultimate, and same thing with Shadow Devil. They don't get good alts off, and then same thing, uh, the Devastator. So, and there is one remaining Assassin. It's a Soul Breaker, but in this case, it has a Flash Dagger. I don't really need to worry about it because the Soul Breaker is not going to just instantly wreck my Dwarf Assassin. The only times you have to worry about Assassins on your Hunters is when they have like three or six Assassin buff, but if they don't have that, you really don't have to worry. The next round is a monster round, so we're not going to really worry about it. But leading into the next, but leading into the next round, what I want to discuss is the items on three of my key units: Dark Spirit, Siren, and my Dwarf Sniper. So let's start with Dark Spirit. If you notice on Dark Spirit, what I end up putting on is one defensive item to give more health and uh, just survivability. Another item is for mana regeneration, and then another survivability item. So at this point, my Dark Spirit, I was able to hit two stars, but when the items were originally on my Dark Spirit, it was only one star, so that's why I wanted to give it enough health so that it can generate enough mana and it can get its alt off. Okay, now onto the Siren. So if we look at the Siren, it's kind of the same thing, is I put uh, defensive items and then I also put mana regeneration items. The reason that I'm not combining the ring and the magic cloak is because I want to, in case I get another mana crystal, I want to be able to get an orb of refreshing on my siren, which would just absolutely be GG. And another thing to keep in mind is when you combine items, ask yourself, am I getting bonus stats? So in the case, if I would have combined my ring and my magic resist cape, then I would have ended up getting another 15% magic resistance. But at this point, I didn't need that on my siren, and it wasn't a I didn't need it to where it's worth giving up an opportunity of getting an Orb of Refreshing on my Siren. Okay, finally, on to Dwarf Sniper. Dwarf Sniper, you can notice that I get same thing, defensive items, and I also give him offensive items. So defensive is I'm giving him the armor. I could have put it on my Lone Druid. I could have put it on my Pirate Captain. But in this case, I just want to make sure my uh, Dwarf and Sniper lives. If you remember from last round, there was a uh, Soul Breaker jumping onto him. So giving him that little extra armor just keeps him alive and makes it even less likely for the Soul Reaper to take him out. And then the attack item is because he is my damage carry. Um, Dwarf Sniper is amazing now that he focuses on the lowest health unit, and the fact that the item makes gives me a 50% chance that the enemies cannot dodge his shot makes it so good on your marksman. So anyways, those are my three carries and the items that I put on them. What I want you all to pay attention to is, one, I scout the enemy, and what I'm doing is I'm looking for silences. So I'm looking, does anybody have human synergy to silence any of my key ultimates? And two, in this game, there's a taboo witcher left. So I'm looking at the position of that taboo witcher, and I want to make sure that it's not aligned with any of my key units. And when I do go to scout, I realize that the taboo witcher is aligned with my lone druid. So I definitely don't want my three-star lone druid to not get its alt off. So what I do is I, I, I decide... Which hero's alt do I not really care about? And I realize, you know what? Tusker's alt is not all that impactful. He can be a sacrificial lamb to the Taboo Witcher. And so what I do is I do switch my formation around. I put the Tusker aligned with the enemy's Taboo Witcher. And you'll notice because of that, I end up crushing second place. And he goes from 16 health all the way down to 1 HP. Okay, in this round, I start by scouting once again. I notice that the second place player is repositioning. I think they realize their formation won't work against me. So I notice I'm keeping track of the Taboo Witcher. It's in the back. So in that case, I can go back to my original formation. The reason for that is because third place um, actually was performing well against the formation that I had that was working against second place. So that's kind of the rock, paper, scissors. Not all formations, not all positions work against everybody. So that's another really big key point. I think a lot of players don't understand that one formation is not work in all situations. It's really on a case-by-case -case basis, and what you want to do in general is you want the formation that performs the best against the average team, right? So if there's eight teams, you want the formation that works well against seven. And here, if you notice, third place actually beats me. So that's why I watched. I beat second place, which is good, but third place did beat me. So now in my head, I'm thinking about, okay, how do I adapt to um, take out third place. And in this case, what happened is I just decided to rank up to level 10 and throw in my Doom. And that's basically how the game ends up playing out. Okay, final round, you'll notice we keep, keep the same formation, but what I did is I added my Doom at level 10 and I put him 
to line up with the um, second place's Berserker who was in the far left hand side. And anyways, we match up against the person who did beat us last round and the Doom just pushes us over the top. If you notice, Soul Reaper again hits amazing alt. He's hitting almost every single ally for heals and almost every single enemy for damage. And we get a very good uh, Dark Spirit ultimate, very good Siren ultimate, stack it with a Pirate Captain ultimate. And yeah, so we beat uh, third place, third place beats second place, and I win the game in that round. So anyways, that was it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, once again, please let me know and I will continue to do content like this and I'll mix it into my rotation. Anyways, take care and as always, have a great day and happy ranking.